Hello everyone, my name is Bjorn Valentine. I hope you're having a dandy day. Today, I got the privilege to interview the amazing Caffeine Fox. Now, for those who've been watching my videos, one of my goals for this new year was to interview Caffeine Fox. And you know what? I just met a New Year's goal. For those who don't know Caffeine Fox, he is a very YouTuber within the fandom. He's an amazing person with an awesome personality and he makes great content. If you had the chance, you should 100% check him out. I will leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. If you are here to see Caffeine Fox, I'll just get straight to the questions. So, to ask first, Caffeine Fox, what alerted you to the fandom? Like, what drew your attention to it? So, what allured me to the fandom and drew me to it was just how accepting it was. I had spent so much time going through the rigors of military training where everybody's expected to look the same, dress the same, and for the most part act the same. And it was just an opportunity to escape from that for a weekend or just, you know, for meets and hanging out with people. So I believe that is what drew me into it at first. Obviously the community is super awesome and that's what's kept me in it for so long. It's, I wouldn't trade it for the world. For my second question, what in your opinion is something you wish you'd known about the fandom before going full throttle into it? Something I wish I knew before going into the fandom as deep as I have is knowing about the drama. I had heard rumors about it because it's the internet. It's, it's, it's a small place despite how big it is. I had heard so many stories and I was like, yeah, you know, that's probably just one person's experience. I was wrong. It's, the drama is a pretty big thing that happens. As much as people try and play it off that it doesn't, it happens. Luckily, I haven't really been a part of any of it, but I've noticed it going around a lot, whether it's on my Twitter feed or just hearing some conversations at some of the meets I've been to. It's a thing. So I wish I knew about that a bit more before joining, but I don't think that would change my opinion of the fandom. It's just something that I didn't really know was as prevalent as it was. Third question. If there was something you could tell yourself before making YouTube videos, what would it be? If there was something I could tell myself before making YouTube videos, it was to be prepared for the weird comments. I've gotten a lot of weird comments. The majority of the comments, and this is not just the stuff that's on the front of the channel, like the comments of the video, but more like my DMs. They range from, you know, hey, this is a great video, I like what you do, and I love those comments, but it's the ones that are like, hey, where do you live? <laughs> those are the ones that I kind of wish I could tell my older self before making videos would be a thing. I suppose another thing I could tell myself before making these videos is honestly just to loosen up a bit. I was actually pretty shy when I first started my videos. Uh, this is about like the first one or two videos. And I was really camera shy. So my voice is super quiet and I didn't really know the kind of character I was trying to go for at the time. And I just kind of went with it and here I am. Four, why do you stay in the fandom? So why I stay in the fandom? That's a great question because some days I, I kind of question it myself, but the reason I am still in the fandom is it is a great tool for me to just kind of unwind. I, I'm a regular person just daily and to have the opportunity to talk with other like-minded people about something we're passionate about, that is amazing. I, oh, it's just so great. I, I can go throughout my whole week as regular Joe, and then I put on my fursuit head and talk with other furries, and life is great again. I, it's, yes, it is amazing. Five, what was one of the more rough things that happened to you because of the fandom? So as far as the most rough thing that's happened to me because of the fandom, I wouldn't necessarily say it's because of the fandom, but there have been issues in the past where 
I don't really want to bring it up, but let's just say person B uh, said some choice things to person A, and because of that, I really had to question like who my true friends were, what they valued, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. I know that's super vague, and to protect the people in this case, I'm not gonna mention the names, but yes, drama. Six, what are some essential items you need to bring to a convention? Some essentials you need before going to a convention, obviously the basics. You need your water. Uh, not all hotels have drinking fountains, uh, and it's inconvenient to have to like take the elevator down find that drinking fountain and like fill up your water bottle. But I would say if you're trying to save money, bring granola bars, bring water, and honestly, know your limits. It's really easy to kind of get carried away and knowing your limits is a good way to avoid having an issue where you dehydrate in the hallway. If you have a fursuit, bring a fursuit brush. Bring some disinfectant spray. I typically use rubbing alcohol mixed with water. The majority of it's water. Only like 20% of it is the actual rubbing alcohol. That keeps away the bacteria and makes it smell nice and fresh. Minty fresh in my case because it's a mint based isopropyl alcohol. And make sure you have your finances squared away. Cons can be pretty expensive, especially if you're eating out all the time and buying art and all that other stuff. Just have some extra money left around, just in case you need to make it back and you didn't get round trip tickets. Seven, what are some don'ts for a convention? Some things you never wanna do when you're at a convention is to just run up and hug people without asking. Not only is it kind of weird, but you can damage their suits or you can like have like your makeup. If you're wearing makeup, it can actually make it to the size of the face. I've only had that happen once and luckily I was able to get it off. Uh, Colonel Cluckers on the other hand has been <laughs> covered in lipstick <laughs> and it's, it's kind of a pain to get out. So aside from knowing your boundaries whenever you're at these conventions, another thing you should not do is do something that would bar the con from happening again. This is stuff like fighting in the lobby, breaking beer bottles over the roof of the hotel, just shenanigans like that, that make the hotel staff say, wow, I really don't wanna have these people here again. And then congratulations, you just made it so a con never happens again. <laughs> the actions of the few can spoil it for everyone. Eight, what is a good story from a furry convention and a bad story from a convention? A good story from a con that I had was when I set up a beer pong table in the hallway outside my room. And it was, it was, it was crazy because I did not actually know that that would happen. <laughs> so yeah, I, I believe it was just the act of that happening where in my head, I was just thinking, what is going on right now? We're a bunch of grown adults setting up a beer pong table in the middle of the hallway. Luckily it was late at night. So a lot of people were asleep and the floor we were staying on had like almost nobody there. I could see that being an issue on other floors, but yeah, that, that was a really good memory. As far as bad things go that have happened to me at a con, I would say when someone went up to hug me and they hadn't showered in a while, I could tell because I could smell it through my fursuit head and outside, my face is like smiley and happy, but on the inside, I was, I was squinting. It was like cutting onions. If I'm able to smell you through my fursuit head from across the lobby, chances are you need to take a shower. The hotel gives it to you for free. Come on now. If you could go to any convention around the world, which would it be and why? If I could go to any convention, it would be Eurofurance. It's been on my list of cons to go to, but because of how far away it is and just the price for getting there, it's 
it isn't really super feasible. I've, I've, I just want to go to it because it's in a completely new setting. And yeah, it, it just looks like a really fun time. But number 10, what is it that the fandom brings you? For example, some people seek the fandom as a place of escape or a place to be themselves. What is the fandom for you, Caffeine Fox? So the fandom for me offers a place where I can just be myself, even though I'm not actually myself. I am able to hang out with people that are a lot more accepting and just have this thing in common that we all have in common. And that isn't the main thing, but it all binds us together. So it's, it's like finding your tribe and the fandom is like, it's like my tribe. So I'm able to talk at length with people about different suit makers and everything else in between. And it's not just that, it's also, we talk about gaming, everything else, but the fandom is kind of like this core object that binds all of us together. I'm in the fandom for the community. That is what it brings to me. Number 11, just to lighten the mood because we had so many serious questions going on here. Is your favorite food actually chicken? And my favorite food is most definitely not chicken. I'm only saying this because Colonel Cluckers is like 4,000 miles away and he can't do anything to me. At least I think. Well, that was the amazing Caffeine Fox. If you haven't seen his content before, please go ahead and check it out now. Like I said before, I left a link to his YouTube channel down below. He has amazing content, as you can see, he's an amazing person. I really hope I get to collab with him again one day eventually, who knows? If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to hit the thumbs up. If you did not like the video, you may hit the thumbs down. If you like the video to the point where you're like, Oh snap, I gotta see more and be notified about it. You can always hit that subscribe button and hit that bell, cause then you'll be notified as to when I come out with a new video. I don't know what this vaccine is that I'm doing. Don't forget everybody, have a dandy day, evening, and good night. See ya.